Hey there guys and welcome back to Pokemon Platinum Off-screen training is done Well I more just used my action replay to give me unlimited rare candies but still So here's the final team Staraptor, Torterra, Garchomp, new, and new edition last episode, Octillery, Rotom and Porygon Z as everyone level 55, I think that's a good enough level to uh, go through the Pokemon League with. So let's see what's gonna happen. Going up against the Elite Four. First up is this chump. Hello, welcome to Pokemon League. I'm Aaron of the Elite Four. It's good to meet you. He's a huge fan of bug Pokemon. Uh, crap, who did I have up front? I think, I think it was Staraptor, so I should be good. And if not, I'm just one switch away from having the perfect Pokemon in anyway. Alright, Aaron, let's see what you got. Yanmega. 49. Should be easy enough. Okay, go, go, Staraptor. Intimidate, not that Yanmega is going to be using physical moves anyway. Alright, fly. Because, uh, well, I, I, I do think... Oh, shit. Oh, hell no. I am not going to put up with this yet. And speed boost, oh boy, this is gonna be bad. Yep, yeah, here we go. I'm pretty sure I made Staraptor forget Aerial Ace for Brave Bird, so that's gonna screw me over in the long run. Ah, shit. Why do they... Oh, of course, I get the flinch. Why do they keep insisting that the Elite, even the Elite Four, resort to cheap tactics like Double Team? Come on. Alright, let's bring Rotom in. Because Rotom doesn't give a crap about bug moves or flying moves, and hell, Thunderbolt will also deal with this thing. Oh, jeez. Hell yeah, speed boost, it's all very nice. Come on, can I get a Thunderbolt in? Oh. Okay, so he's got Air Slash, Double Team, probably Bug Buzz, and then something else. Though I don't know what that uh, the fourth move is. Come on. Oh, really? Now this is just overdoing it here. God damn it, game. Is he gonna actually get up to plus six evasion? Seriously? I am not gonna stand for this. Double team again. Okay, so he's at plus four now. I have no clue what my uh, hit percentages are now, but they are... Oh, there we go. Come on, one hit KO. Please, It's I'm, I'm six levels higher. And Rotom's pretty strong, so this should take it out. Come on, yes! Thank you, Jesus! So glad I'm not gonna have to deal with that shit anymore. Just watch all of his other Pokemon pull double team on me as well. Okay, Scizor is up next. Scizor's only real weakness is fire, so let's bring in Octillery. Hope he can take a pounding because he's not gonna outspeed a Scizor, I think. Alright, what is he going to do? X Scissor. Come on, Octillery, hang in there. This is going to hurt because, whoa, that is actually surprisingly little amount of damage done. I mean, Scizor, it's got base 130 attack, strong as hell. And x Scissor is no weak move either. But whatever, Flamethrower is a solid one-hit KO because it's four times weak to fire. Alright, next up, Heracross. Probably going to go back into Staraptor for that one. Go, go, Staraptor. Intimidate. Should pretty much neuter the Heracross anyway, and he's not gonna survive a flying attack. I mean, we saw how well the rival's Heracross took flying attacks in the last two episodes. So, fly. I could go for Brave Bird, but that's just uh, the recoil damage. I'm not really gonna like that. And that should take him out. Easily. Unless I was expecting him to use, like, Endure or something. Some really weird tactic like that. But he doesn't, so that's good. Alright, and get a couple experience, and Drapion. We haven't seen one of those yet, but I like it. It's a pretty damn cool Pokemon. And we can bring in Torterra against it, because Drapion is not a bug type, it's a poison and dark type. And I've seen some people get confused by that. They think it's a bug and poison type, try to use Psychic on it, and then it's not very... Or it's just immune to it. Anyway, he does have Ice Fang. That's kind of a bummer. And this is his most powerful Pokemon, I believe. Kind of funny. He's the bug type specialist, and then his strongest Pokemon isn't even a bug type. But whatever. Come on, Earthquake. Very nice. 
I was uh, perhaps expecting him to survive that because Drapion is pretty bulky. But Torterra is just too strong. And then Vespiquen. Now Torterra's got this. No problem. Because I taught him Stone Edge. And it actually hits. That's nice. But is it going to be a one-hit KO? Because Vespiquen is pretty bulky. It is four times weak to rock and critical hits. I don't know if that mattered or not. It may very well have. Anyway, that's the first guy down. Him and his cheap-ass Yan Mega. And in Diamond and Pearl, he was a lot easier than in this one, because... I think that instead of Yan Mega and Scizor, he had uh, Beautifly and Dustox, which are absolutely pathetic Pokémon. So, yeah. He still had Drapion, Vespaquen, and Heracross, I think, but Beautifly and Dustox were just awful. Next up, an old-ass woman. Gonna put Octillery up front, because she will be using Ground-type Pokémon. Alright, let's go. Well, well, you're quite the adorable trainer, but you also got a spine. I'm Bertha. Oh, so first guy starts with an A, then the second one with a B. Are they gonna have, like, an alphabet motif here? Would be interesting. Don't think they've ever done that before. Anyway, Bertha. She leads with Whiskash. Water and ground type. Not the best choice to have artillery fight. Does Whiskash have water absorb? I'm kind of thinking it does. No. I'm pretty sure it's one of Whiskash's possible abilities, though. I mean, I know he has, like, Oblivious, and then I think Water Absorb, and then something else. But they didn't have the hidden abilities yet in this game, so it's either Oblivious or Water Absorb, I think. Anyway, for some reason, she feels the need to set up Sandstorm, even though she has a Hippowdon on her team. Not exactly sure I get the point behind that. But whatever, Surf is gonna be a solid two-hit KO. But Artillery did kinda get banged up by that Earth Power. He definitely took that a lot worse than he took that Scizor's X Scissor. Surprising, because Whiskash is nowhere near as strong as Scizor is. Anyway, up next is Gliscor. Octillery does have Ice Beam, but he's kinda low on health and Gliscor is bound to be faster, so let's bring Porygon Z in on this. Also, Porygon Z is definitely gonna get a special attack boost here. Because Gliscor's physical defense is great, his special defense is kinda crappy. And he even outspeeds Porygon Z. Well, I guess I could take an Earthquake. I mean, if Octillery can take an X Scissor from a Scissor that well, then surely Porygon Z, well, that's, uh, decent. Better than I expected, at least. And this is easily gonna be a one-hit KO because of Gliscor's four times weakness to Ice. So down it goes. And what else is she gonna whip out? I know she has a Hippowdon, and I'm pretty sure... Yep, here comes the Hippowdon, which with its ability Sandstream will always set up a permanent Sandstorm. So that Sandstorm from Whiskash was absolutely pointless. Anyway, let's see if this is gonna one-hit KO it. Because Hippowdon has a shit ton of HP. It's not that bulky on the special side, but it might be able to live this. Or not. I guess that special attack boost I got really came in handy here. Alright, who's next? Only two Pokemon remain. One of which is Golem, rock and ground type. It's also not gonna take an Ice Beam very well. Even though it does get a special defense boost because of the Sandstorm, because it's a rock type. But then again, I have the special attack boost to kind of counterbalance that, so it's probably still gonna go down anyway. Yep. And then her final Pokémon will be Rhyperior. Also a rock and ground type. Most powerful Pokémon on the team. A pretty damn powerful Pokémon in general. Even though it's it's been kind of getting worse and worse ever since it was introduced. Because there's been new Pokémon that pretty much do everything Rhyperior can do, but probably better. Anyway, Rhyperior, rock and ground type. Four times weak to water, so let's see how well it's gonna take that. It does have the ability Solid Rock, which reduces damage from super effective moves. It's a pretty damn good ability, but it's not enough to survive a move that's four times effective on it. Even with the Sandstorm boost. So there we go, two down, three to go. Went pretty well. I'm trying to remember what her team was in Diamond and Pearl, because she didn't have Rhyperior, she didn't have uh, 
Gliscor. I believe she had Pseudo Wudo and something else. Gastrodon or I think Gastrodon or Quagsire. Either one of those two. Anyway, up next, Flint, the guy we met earlier who pretty much forced us to fight Volkner because he was all depressed and stuff. And I'm just gonna heal up real quickly. And yeah, all that stuff is also the result of my action replay meddling. But hey, I wasn't gonna waste all that time on actual training when I could just do this. I mean, come on, I have a life here, people. I have other stuff to do. Not a whole lot, but I do have other stuff to do. So just patch them all up, because I'm especially gonna need artillery against this one. Because unlike in Diamond and Pearl, his team in this one is... Well, not really a joke. In Diamond and Pearl, his team was just ridiculous. He's supposed to be, oh, a fire-type trainer, and then only two of his five Pokémon were bloody fire-types. Just pathetic. Anyway, let's go. Ronald McDonald. I mean, seriously, that's what he looks like. Yellow shirt, red afro. All he needs is some white clown makeup. Swear to God. Alright, let's go, Flint. He is going to lead with Houndoom. Alright, Dark and Fire type. Should be no problem for Octillery. He is going to be faster, though. Oh, crap, that's going to flinch me, isn't it? I'm calling flinch. No, pleasant surprise. Guess the game isn't out to screw me at every possible turn. Anyway, this should one-hit KO it, because Houndoom is not bulky at all. There we go. Alright, what else is he going to bring against me? Infernape. Oh boy. Well, the one that our rival had was uh, kind of a problem. So let's see how well we fare against this one. See if its moves are different. Alright, Infernape. Level 55. So now we're kind of getting to the point where he's about... The Elite Force Pokémon at are about the same level as mine. So the next one and the champion are going to be well above my Pokémon. Flare Blitz. I took that really well. Probably because of the Intimidate. And go, go, Brave Bird. Fly would have probably also defeated him. But I just felt like showing off Brave Bird. I mean, I have plenty of healing items to heal Staraptor up anyway. And he's not really going to be much use anymore. Because I don't think... Well, there's one big Pokemon coming up that's weak to flying. But I'll just heal him up before that one. Anyway, out comes Magmortar. Time to bring Garchomp in. His battle debut. And it should be a curb stomp battle because Garchomp outclasses Magmortar in every possible way. I mean, Magmortar is pretty cool and all. It's got pretty good attacking stats, but it's just too slow to be really effective. Anyway, Earthquake should be an easy one-hit KO, because come on, it's a Garchomp throw in it. This thing was uber for a while. I don't think it's any anymore, though. You know, out comes Rapidash. Here it comes for the bronies. Yay, it's a flaming unicorn. And now it's gonna get destroyed by my Shark Dragon. Honestly, Garchomp... Appearance-wise, it uh, when I first saw it, I thought it was going to be a water and dragon, because come on, it looks like a shark. It's probably a good thing it wasn't a water and dragon type, though, because that would have probably made him even more broken than he already is. And finally, Flareon. Wow, definitely going out with a bang here. He definitely saved the shittiest for last. I mean, come on, even Rapidash is better than Flareon is, and Rapidash is not good at all. You need determination here. Will is overpowering me. It's not my will, it's my Pokemon. Oh yeah, let's burn my Octillery. That's a real good idea. Because I'm totally going to use physical attacks anyway. Well, I guess I do still have Waterfall on it, but I'm probably not going to resort to that when I have Surf, which is stronger. And I'm pretty sure Flareon's special defense is... Wait, it actually survived that? Okay, I'm thinking maybe his physical defense is lower than his special defense. Yeah, I think Flareon had good attack and good special defense and shitty everything else. Anyway, go for another Surf. Maybe I just got unlucky with the damage roll or something. Come on. Is it gonna kill him now? Yep, it's gonna kill him now. Weird. Anyway, that's gonna get Octillery to level 56. And three guys down, two to go. 
And honestly, his team is a big improvement considering what he had in Diamond and Pearl. Infernip was the strongest, he also had a Rapidash, and then he had a Steelix, a Drift Blim, and a Lopunny. Which are about as far from being fire types as you can possibly get. They did all have fire moves though, I think Lopunny had like fire punch, and Steelix had fire fang, and Drift Blim had, uh, I don't know, Will-O-Wisp or something. But yeah, his team in Diamond and Pearl definitely sucked. Anyway, in the next episode, the last member of the Elite Four and the champion. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.